waste management. What we are doing, when you create a virtual machine, okay, so when you create a virtual machine, you have disk when you add it, right, VMDK. You can assign a policy on top of it, saying that how much tolerance you want to keep for this volume. If you set it to 1, there will be one copy always ready of that particular virtual machine on a other node. If anything goes wrong, your drive goes wrong, your server goes wrong, the redundant copy takes it away. If you set it to 2, there will be 2 copies. It's very similar to RAID 1 concept, mirroring. If you want 5 TB usable, you have to add 10 TB because you are keeping the double the capacity, right? If you keep it to 3, you need to add triple the capacity. That is as simple as that. We have something called as eraser coding also. You can get the utilization of RAID Pi and RAID 6 as well if you want, right? So moving ahead, that is one policy which you can assign. One factor of it. Second, you can factor how many IOPS you want to dedicate to this virtual machine, which is not possible with the physical infra. I cannot define these many IOPS out of this volume to the virtual machine. You cannot do that. But over here, you can define it. You can change it anytime. You can also define what is the read cache percentage you want to dedicate. So if you have three SSDs across cluster and you want to define 30% of that cache I want to dedicate to this database, you can do it and you can change it anytime. Can you change RAID 5 to RAID 10 in storage on the fly? You cannot do it. You have to create a volume then do a data migration or not. Over here you can change FTT is equal to 1 to 2 on the fly. You can change your capacity requirement, you can change your caching requirement. So this is the beauty of software defined storage. You are no more restricted to the hardware running under it. Clear? So moving ahead, again replication is one add-on as, as Sir has mentioned. So we can set up DR with the storages. You can have identical storages, do a volume based migration, vSphere based migration. Over here also you can keep it, you can also keep a near DR which can be you know, a uh, few distance away with the specific latency requirement, it's a zero downtime solution. Any Anything goes wrong here, you have redundant copy, without any failover, it takes it over. It's a zero downtime solution. On top of that, you, you can also place a DR with the vSphere replication solution, which is again built in. Okay. So this is all about storage based, software defined storage. We'll move ahead to the third component of it how the networking is happening. So what do we have in networking, in a physical infra? We have switches, L2 switches, L3 switches, we have firewalls, we have load balancers and all that stuff. So what we are doing, we are again giving these capabilities on a hypervisor. So just to, just to add, when we talk about software defined storage, this feature is bundled into the hypervisor. When you buy vSphere ESX 6.5, maybe 5.5 or above, any version, vSAN is bundled into it, you just have to apply the license and enable it. You don't need any component to be added on top of it as a virtual machine. It's bundled. Same applies to the NSX. All the capabilities of the networking are bundled into the hypervisor. No need of installation to activate it. Only the modules you have to activate and the control plane you have to install on top of it. Right? So what, what it does basically? So this is your physical infra, you have the compute which is running on a hypervisor basically, right? On top of that we are creating a network hypervisor which is delivering all these capabilities of switching, routing, firewalling, load balancing, majorly L2 to L4 capabilities on a software platform, okay? So these are few capabilities, if you want more than that, like up to L7 also we can go, we can integrate with our partners like Palo Alto and all that stuff, whereas they can provide a deep packet inspection when it comes to the virtualization. Now, what do why we why we need NSX? There are a few use cases. One one thing is clear automation. If you want faster response, you cannot rely on the physical hardware. It has to be on a virtual uh, you know, on a policy based platform. That is one automation. Security is the best use case. Whereas we are we are getting more acceptance towards the NSX, we are going to see it in uh, detail. Application continuity, if you, if you are planning for DR, as someone was saying, you know, they want to keep a DR of it. But whenever you see a DR, I'm, I'm migrating, I'm replicating my virtual machine from this location to this. Practically, the IPs are different. I have to do a lot of changes at the DR side to make it alive. Now, imagine I have a stretched network across my DC and DR, 
no need of IP change. So that is also what we are giving. We will focus on one use case here, data breaches, because this is very common scenario nowadays. Have you heard about WannaCry, Locky, what are they? Ransomware attacks, right? So any of your user, if he gets a mail, a Trojan mail, he can, the, the hacker can copy the data, he can open it, he can see all the infrastructure which is accessible from that particular user or from that particular server. And generally they target the less you know, critical application. We are not claiming we will stop the security threats, not at all. It's not possible. But we are claiming we can see, we can secure the footprint, we can reduce the footprint of the attack. How we are doing it? Now this is a normal scenario. One of my you know, Trojan comes from the perimeter firewall, some, some got, somehow it got, you know, got breached. It came into the infrastructure, all my virtual machines in the network, right? If I'm, if I'm accessible to all the virtual machines, I can spread that traffic here and there, right? Now how to stop it? Can I apply firewall policies on each and every host, on each and every VM? That's not a practical practice, right? You, you cannot have number of internal firewalls or number of you know, VM based firewalls. That's not a bad based practice. Now what we are doing, we are applying these firewall rules on a VM NIC, which is a virtual machine leaker. Right? For example, if my web tier and application tier and DB tier running as a virtual machine, I can define a rule saying that web should be accessible to my app with 8043 port only. Rest of the ports are blocked. So if suppose my web is attacked or infected, it cannot pass on the infection to the rest of the virtual machine. Every VM is segmented from one another. So this is one use case where we are giving the value when it comes to NSX. I'll move ahead. Now what is on top of that? We have seen the data center, we have seen storage, server and networking. But how to manage it? So there are customers who are using x86 servers on top of that computer virtualization, storage virtualization, network virtualization. There are servers where there is no virtualization, like most of you, right? So there are servers who are using the competition uh, virtualization platform like Red Hat, it can be hyper storage basically. Or it can be a cloud platform also. It can be IBM software, Azure, it can be AWS, anything. Now what we are doing? We are giving a one common tool on top of all these to manage all the infrastructure. Okay, that cloud management tool we have divided into three categories. Operations, automations and business. Operations is something related to day-to-day -day activity. What do you do in operations? To monitor the data, if anything goes wrong, troubleshoot, right? To optimize the capacity. All these features are there in operations. Automation is very unique feature for software developers. It is, it is making very sense. So just like your Flipkart and Amazon, we give a service portal to developers, self-service portal, they can log into that. As an administrator, I have assigned a blueprint to him. Blueprint is nothing but attaching the policies. Creating a VM, attach the NSX, attach vSAN, give it as a blueprint, present it to a developer. When he logs in, he registers to the blueprint. When he registers to it, the entire <coughs> creation is automated, orchestrated. You don't have to go and create a virtual machine, assign the policies. The blueprint is taking care of it and the entire thing is automated. Where it was taking day, uh, weeks and months, now it is taking minutes to give you an application. So this is where the automation piece comes into picture. Business is majorly for the uh, CFO CTOs when they want to see uh, how how the you know investment is where they have invested uh, whether they want to see I want to run my application on Amazon let's say how much it will cost me so they can compare the cloud strategies with the on-prem solutions so this is where we we play a role private cloud public cloud or it can be a hybrid cloud entire stuff can be managed from one single console when it comes to operations yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. Can I customize the policy with the SMS? Sorry? Can I customize the policy with the SMS? I mean, uh, customize the policy with the VSN and LMSX. Yeah, you can customize it. So as per my requirement, so I want to change the firewall policy individual the NICs or uh, individual desktop. I want to change the policy with the yes. each and every because uh, there are different level of people or something, so I want to change their desktop. As for that, can I change it customize? I'll, I'll take it one by one. VSN, when you say, there is VSAN default policy already developed 
If you want to customize it, you can write your own policy. That is possible. When you talk about NSX or network virtualization, it's entirely yours. You have to do it according to the infrastructure. Now, that's a difference. When you talk about the normal firewalls, what do you do? Source IP, destination IP, port, and all that stuff. Over here, it's completely VM tagging. Create a tier, tag that VM. You don't have to remember your IPs. Thanks. Yeah. So, moving ahead, this is VMS vision. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, when you talk about VMS vision, uh, someone was asking from uh, from this side, what about the cloud strategy, right? So VMware has recently announced a partnership with AWS. We have already uh, done a partnership with IBM Software, whereas we can give the uh, compute, storage, and network capabilities all these three products as a skew in uh, in a the respective public clouds. So uh, as a customer, you can avail that stuff. Now the advantage is, if if I am running my virtual machine in an on-prem data center, I want to migrate that virtual machine to my public cloud and move it back, it's seamlessly possible because you are running on a common platform, right? So, this is where the vision is. This is the architecture of IT. It can be traditional applications, it can be modern applications, it can be containers, it can be dockers, it can be any, you uh, know, latest applications you say, you can run it on our platform. It can be private, it can be managed, just like you know, Netmagic is there, CP is there, who are like managed data center, we can partner from us. And it can be public also, whereas as of now we support uh, AWS and IBM, you can run your platform on top of it. And it can also be build your own, it can be hyper it can be anything. On top of that, mobility is the piece which I have completely missed out because it's related to the data center. But just to add a quick thoughts, uh, someone was asking uh, about the, you know, how mobile devices are getting managed. So when we access mobile devices, what, what all things you do? You access the corporate apps, right? And at the same time, your end users don't want the, you know, corporate apps to be shared with the personal apps. They want their personal apps utilization. So basically, you can containerize your corporate apps. So that within that container, if you open anything, it will connect to your internal infrastructure in a secured manner. And the VPN which is there, it's not device-based VPN, it's app-based VPN. So the point is, if it is device-based VPN, even your personal apps can you know, infect your uh, you know, corporate data. But when you say app-level VPN, your per app, corporate app is only accessible to the internal infra, not the personal applications. So that is where we play a huge role. We acquired a solution called as AirWatch. And we, we already have a good uh, piece of EUC uh, when, it, when it talk about the EUC. So this is where I can sum up any device, any application on any cloud, managed through one single console. This is it. Thank you.